Our top focus in Vyond Fine Print. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is in India on a crucial two-day visit. The tour comes in the backdrop of the Russia-Ukraine war, of course. The key focus of this visit is to finalize a two-way $1.3 billion investment deal and also help ease the visa process for Indians looking to immigrate to Britain. The trip that has been postponed twice due to the COVID-19 pandemic will now focus on deepening the ties between the two countries. Prime Minister Johnson, ahead of his visit, confirmed that the talks will focus on job creation, economic growth, with the focus on energy security and defense, and further enhance people-to-people -people ties. I don't think at any time in my political lifetime has the uh, the living bridge between the UK and India really been so strong. And just on this trip, uh, we've got about, I think about a billion pounds worth of investment coming from India into the UK. They're the second biggest uh, investor in the UK. That, that investment alone is going to drive 11,000 jobs. We're hoping to complete another free trade agreement uh, with India uh, by, the, by the end of the year, by the autumn. And already you're seeing uh, products like uh, UK medical supplies, British apples, uh, are getting ready to come onto the Indian uh, market even before uh, the deal is done. The British Prime Minister has signalled that the country is ready to offer more visas to Indians in return for clinching a key free trade deal. Johnson issued a statement before reaching India saying, and I have quoting at this point, I have always been in favour of talented people coming to this country. We are short of the tune of hundreds of thousands of people in our economy and we need to have a progressive approach and we will. The UK Prime Minister, while speaking to the British Parliament yesterday, had emphasised that he will focus on people-to-people -people ties during this visit. New Delhi, on its part, has been calling on London to ease the visa process, thus ensuring greater opportunities for Indians to live and work in Britain. Any trade deal will likely be contingent on relaxing rules and lowering the fees for Indian students and working professionals. Sources now tell Vion that the visit will also focus on the situation in the Indo-Pacific in particular. Downing Street said that Prime Minister Johnson will reiterate his commitment to a free and coercion-free Indo-Pacific. Sources also said that London is ready to extend cooperation to help India enhance India's defence manufacturing capabilities adding that the UK will offer to transfer technology for the joint production of military hardware. The visit is likely to be the staging ground for further boosting of trade ties, with Downing Street confirming that the new trade pact amounting to more than $1.3 billion will be signed. The focus on science and tech collaborations with a special focus on artificial intelligence and healthcare Remember, Britain used to be India's largest trading partner in early 2000, but since then, the position has slipped to 17th last year. London is likely to also hold talks on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Johnson spokesperson yesterday told the British media that the UK had no intentions of lecturing New Delhi on its ties with Russia, but will, however, present the UK's position and listen to the Indian perspective. India has so far maintained a non-aligned stance during the conflict and refused to bow down to Western pressure of criticizing Russia and imposing sanctions against it. According to sources, Johnson will tout the benefits of India moving more quickly towards renewable energy. This after, India continued to import energy products from Moscow. He also visited the Sabarmati Ashram earlier today, leaving a message in the ashram's visitor book. The British Prime Minister said, and I quote, it is an immense privilege to come to the ashram of this extraordinary man and to understand how he mobilized such simple principles of truth and non-violence to change the world for the better. And tomorrow, Prime Minister Johnson will be visiting the Indian President's house in the early morning hours, following which he is expected to pay a tribute to Mahatma Gandhi. He will then meet India's External Affairs Minister, Dr. S. Jay Shankar, following which he will finally meet with India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. The two leaders are expected to exchange MOUs and issue a joint press statement before Johnson's departure in the evening.
Now to discuss the significance of the UK Prime Minister's India visit, joining us live for more perspective is Manjeev Singh Puri, live from New Delhi. He is a former Indian ambassador to the United Nations. Uh, ambassador Puri, thank you so much for joining us on Vion at this hour. My first question to you. Now, Johnson has indicated that he's ready to offer more visas to India in exchange for a free trade deal. This trade deal is, of course, at the center of his India visit. But I'm sure that all Indians at this point, especially students and working professionals, are more concerned about the relaxing of visa norms. What's your take? Priyanka, you're absolutely right. Look, India and Britain share a very vast relationship. Trade is one part of it, but people's links are perhaps at the center of it. And when you want to take trade, you want to take economics forward. Frankly, it can't be done without people. And the fact remains, as Boris Johnson himself said in the British Parliament, Britain needs talented people. And India is one of the countries which has, let me say, a relatively ready supply of good people who can contribute to the British economy and make it a win-win situation. I think that's absolutely right. And I hope the British will move on that. And we, on our part in India, will move on the trade side. Absolutely. And I think the visa aspect is something that all Indians are uh, completely focused on in the UK Prime Minister's visit. Let's remember, of course, that Boris Johnson is currently facing a huge scandal back home, the Partygate scandal. He's not exactly very popular in his home country. So this India visit and the timing is also very crucial. What's your take? Look, the timing is certainly very important. It seeks to do two things. I think we should be very clear. It certainly has an international, or let me say a global perspective. The Russia-Ukraine war, discussions on that, no matter what has been said otherwise. There is also the entire issue of China, the Indo-Pacific, and I think all of these will be stressed. And then, perhaps giving much more meat to the visit as such, is the question of bilateralism. The right. trade deal, the people's links, what can we do in terms of boosting more manufacture in India, something that will also benefit the British economy? All of these things add up together. Look, after Britain left the European Union, in some senses, Britain is also trying to find a tether for its economy. And India, one of the largest and biggest growing economies, is one that provides a kind of perfect fit for the British. And so, therefore, there is, in my opinion, a good win-win possibility here. Absolutely, Ambassador. You've pointed out a very significant aspect in all of this that given the kind of uh, turmoil that the British economy is currently facing, it's looking to India as a strong ally. You've said that it's looking to India as a tether for its own economy. Let's talk about something that has almost become a footnote in this visit but gained special significance for us, the focus on the Indo-Pacific. Now, Prime Minister Johnson is calling for a coercion-free Indo-Pacific. Tell us about the significance of that. For a long time, what has been the essence of the Indo-Pacific? There has been the question of cooperation, especially among like-minded countries, which are democracies and which are large economies. You've had the Quad in that particular context. Then we have the entire question that the large hegemon in this region, China, which has been flexing its muscles, exercising hegemony, that it, it adheres to a certain rules-based order. And the question of coercion is certainly important because you've seen that in elements in the South China Sea, etc. And we've also seen it in certain countries in our neighborhood as a result of very, very strong, let me say, financial diplomacy and financial action on their part. So Prime Minister Johnson stressing it is nothing new, but I think particularly useful and good that the world's largest democracy and the largest economies are together in ensuring that perhaps one of the most important geographies in the world today, and becoming increasingly more important, the Indo-Pacific, remains one in which freedoms, where rules-based orders and these sort of things prevail, because that is in the interest of the world in general, and of course the people in the Indo-Pacific. Absolutely. Ambassador Puri, thank you so much for all those perspectives and insights, and thanks for clearing that up for our viewers. Thanks for joining us on Beyond This Hour. Thank you. Now, our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sidhan Sibyl, also brings us the latest on the story from the Indian capital, New Delhi. Let's take a look.
Well, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is here in India and uh, day one, of course, was in Gujarat. We saw the visuals uh, and, of course, uh, his focus area being on trade. Uh, he hopes that uh, the free trade agreement between India and UK can be signed by autumn. But uh, it is uh, in Delhi on Friday where both sides, uh, the Indian Prime Minister and the UK Prime Minister, will sit down for hard diplomacy, focus on Indo-Pacific, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Trade remains the top priority. We know that uh, UK uh, Prime Minister has said that uh, London is willing to be flexible when it comes to visa regime for more Indians to go and study and uh, for employment in UK. And UK is keen to have more skilled Indian workers in a post-Brexit world as well. So it's a win-win and uh, we know that uh, uh, two rounds of FTA talks have happened. The third round will happen uh, next week uh, and uh, both sides are keen that it is concluded as soon as possible. Possible, but Ukraine issue, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, is something that will be uh, will be in fact uh, uh, the elephant or the bear in uh, the room. Uh, we know that UK has said it's not going to lecture India on its stance on uh, the conflict in Europe, uh, but is going to share perspective, give its own perspective, and take uh, uh, the views of New Delhi as well. But uh, uh, unlikely that New Delhi is going to change its stance. Uh, uh, it has good relationship with Moscow. London and Washington and that stance is something that is expected uh, to remain uh, for a long time but uh, by and large a very important visit the first European leader to visit India since the Russian invasion of Ukraine a visit that will go forward in terms of uh, strengthening of the relationship between UK and India with video journalist Neeraj Patel Siddhan Sibyl for Vyond in New Delhi